Clash of the Champions, everybody. Yes, Clash of the Champions. Uh, Open with New Day versus Gallows and Anderson in a match that feels like it started about seven and a half hours ago. Dude, we weren't even watching like a four-hour show in a pre-show. No. This did go past the top of the hour. It went about three hours and ten minutes. It was a last-minute call to go that long. It felt twice that long. They were going to go right to the top of the hour, and then at about two minutes before the top of the hour, they decided to go ten minutes later. And sure as shit they did. That explains so much about that yeah. main event. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Well, New Day versus Gallows and Anderson. We got a usual wacky New Day promo, and then a match we have seen 17,000 times. Uh, it occurred to me, literally as they were out there doing these introductions, I was talking to my buddy Sean about how I had yet another pay-per-view to watch today, and how I was not looking forward to it at all. And he said, is there anything you're looking forward to? And I said, eh, AJ Styles will probably have a good match. Because I forgot it was even a Raw show. You know, there was a Raw show a few weeks ago where about 10 minutes into the third hour, I was like, I am so goddamn bored. But you know what? AJ's going to come out and have a great match here. And then I remembered he ain't even on this brand. No. Dude, this brand split. Now, that said, this was a good show. Don't get me wrong. Kind of. There was good there was good wrestling on the show. There were some questionable finishes. There was good wrestling on the show. There was there's I have huge problems with the uh, big picture, but we'll get to, get to that as we go. So this match, it was a fun match, but it was nothing more than a fun match you would see on Raw, which is also a 3-hour show that goes too long. Immediately heat on Kofi. Biggie makes his comeback, suplexes everything. He goes for a spear through the ropes and Anderson cuts him off with a knee to the head. And if I was Biggie, I would much rather take that knee to the head than hit the spear through the ropes. You may be taking a lot of knees to the head after Cesaro tonight. That's true. I hope he learned a valuable lesson. So we had uh, Kofi hit uh, Anderson with his spinning kick. Biggie hit the big ending. Okay, you know how your pet peeve is guys who look at the ref before they kick out? Oh, man. Anderson takes this move, and he's so knocked out by both their finishers that his immediate response is to turn his head and stare outside to make sure Gallows is in position to break it up because that's the spot. I am pretty sure that he spun his head around 360 degrees in order to look outside in the middle of this match. It's funny now. It used to bug me, but now it's funny. Because, I mean, quite frankly, I didn't care about the result of this match because I know that the New Day is not losing until they break Demolition's record. Yeah. And so they're going to keep winning, so I didn't give a shit who won this match. I just... Waited for the finish. The finish was Woods hit Anderson with his trombone, and the New Day hit the assisted big ending, which is now called the... Is that min- like his wang? Hmm? Is that like his wang? That was not a metaphor. Oh. He has an actual little, little, actual literal horn that he hit him with. And uh, the New Day hit the assisted big ending, which is now called the Midnight Hour for the win. It was fun. So at the beginning of this match, the story of this show was that there was good wrestling questionable finishes in a whole bunch of missed spots. And the missed spots included whoever was directing the show as there was a spot very early on where the trombone was in danger. Not sure if it was Gallows or Anderson, but one of them threatened to destroy the trombone, which actually got a ton of heat, but they didn't get it on camera. And if you look at the finish of this show or the finish of this match, where the trombone was used to set up the finish. That played into the story of the match, and they didn't get it. Straight out of TNA here. Match was good. In fact, what was surprising about this match is how much they gave Gallows and Anderson. It was like, after 19 matches, they finally had a match where they gave them a bunch of credibility, and they made you think they were actually going to win the titles. And then they didn't. It would have been nice to them for them to have given them this in the beginning of this feud, instead of just a bunch of short nothing matches with nothing finishes. This was the first one that was like a real legit competitive match, and it's like the end of the feud. There's no way they can keep so wrestling. So you think. There's no way. There's no way. They will point out that the third man with a weapon interfered and thus they deserve a rematch. And I'll just keep on going. They recapped T.J. Perkins winning the Cruiserweight Classic. It was a cool video, and it is a good way to introduce the Cruiserweights to a new audience, and I don't know why they didn't do it on Raw. Tom Phillips then interviewed T.J. backstage. 
He asked if he agreed. He actually had a legit question. Does Brian Kendrick's experience on this big stage, does that make him the favorite tonight? Perkins cut an adequate promo. He said he was born with a clutch gene. He was confident he would win tonight. I don't think that gene exists. I think he's making that up. I think it's a wacky cash phrase somebody thought of. So Kendrick versus Perkins. Perkins has a new gimmick. He is literally a video game character. His screen lights up. It says max health and HP. And his music is 16-bit. It's tremendous. So they wrestled exactly like they did in the CWC. Perkins was doing all sorts of wacky takedowns and dancing. Kendrick was desperate and using the ring as a weapon or anything he could to, to cheat to take advantage. We had many, many straight jacket holds. The crowd was patient with them. You were talking about some missed spots. My favorite was when Perkins tried this jumping neck breaker, but he missed uh, he missed Kendrick's head. And so on his way down, he just reaches out and grabs whatever he can, which is Kendrick's hair, and yanks him down by the hair. I bet Brian loved that. Okay. So very quickly here, this is this is not exact because I just did it very quickly, and it does include house show matches, but the New Day versus Gallows and Anderson has taken place 19 times in the last 60 days. That seems excessive. That's a lot of matches. Yeah. So Perkins uh, avoided a sliced bread. He momentarily forgot the spot, but Kendrick did a tremendous job of keeping things together. They started hitting uh, big moves and kicking out and started uh, escaping from various submission holds. And finally, Perkins escaped the captain's hook, hit the fireman's carry kick, and hooked the knee bar for the win. Crowd loved this by the end. Well done, you two men. Well done, WWE, for giving them a shot. I liked when, and I may have totally botched this up, but I could have sworn in the Cruiserweight Classic, Kendrick's weight was listed as like 154 or something like that. Comes out here, he's 170 now. Well, you know, cheat days. I guess so. Yeah. I guess he doesn't have to make... Now, do they still have to make weight? It was announced that the weight limit is still 205 pounds. Wow, so they weigh him in before every show. Apparently. That's intense. Mm. So, what's max health? In a video game. Is that what it is? Yeah. What video game? Many. Really? Yeah. Oh, start. it's his power bar? Yeah. I got you start, it. Max is short for maximum. I got you start it. Maximum health. I figured that's what max was short for, well, jackass. That's what, I just you, wanted to know what max I don't know why you were so confused. Uh, that's what it means. I don't play video games. I thought maybe you had a sponsor. I see. And I was just confused as all hell. Yeah. All right, I got it now. So he is a video game character. That's the music. I mean, we got that established. The look. Yeah, the tights. These guys did a good job. There were a lot of botched spots in this match. They've got a way to pixelate him when he wrestles. Pixelate him as he wrestles? Yeah. So he looks like, he looks like a video game Dude, character. Dude, just pixelate the whole screen. I guess so. Like Sin Cara when he used to have that, those colors. Oh, yeah. Remember they put the lights out when he oh, wrestled? Oh, God, that's right. It was horse shit. Oh, it's a terrible gimmick. Yeah. But they could do that with these guys. Yeah. They all they all have video game pixelation when they come out and have their matches. Man, that's a good idea. I have them once in a while. So anyway, good match. What's her name? Went to interview TJ afterwards. When Kendrick interrupted, did the big handshake and hug spot, but then he dropped Perkins with a head button and walked away. You know, I don't know if... Ah, what the hell. I think it would have been better if they would have done all of this on Raw. Yeah. I think Raw should have been TJ Perkins versus Brian Kendrick, have a very good match like they did here, have the handshake gimmick afterwards, which, by the way, they didn't do at all on Raw, have... TJ beat him, and then Kendrick headbutts him to set up a rematch of the pay-per-view or something, and then you come out here and do the pay-per-view. The, my point is, the presentation here was a thousand times better than the presentation that we saw on Raw. That is a fact. Speaking of video games, the Suplex City-themed commercial for the new video game is very wacky, and it also has Alberto in it. Things happen. Film way in advance. <laughs> Phillips interviewed Cesaro backstage... He vowed to reward the Cesaro section with the greatest comeback in WWE history, and the fans were all, meh. Well, maybe it was because he said that this wasn't about physical dominance, it's about mental toughness. I am here to earn my championship opportunity. This will be the start of the biggest comeback in sports entertainment history. I don't blame the guy. This fucking sucked. Oh, yeah. So they cut outside the arena shot, and it suddenly occurred to me, 
this show began within like an hour of an NFL game ending three blocks away. That's insane. I thought it was a treat getting around downtown Indianapolis today. Hey, we got a high school right here, three blocks away from an elementary school. And for some reason, both schools get out at the same time. Uh I tried to come home the other day. At 2 o'clock, it was a nightmare. There was 5,000 buses on the road and a line of traffic going all the way down that damn road. Hmm. Whose idea was that? Can't you stagger your evacuations or whatever you want to call it? What's it called when school's out? It's technically a term. Technically, technically, technically accurate. Hmm. Uh, dismissal, I think, is a more dismissal. common term. Dismissal. For me, it was an evacuation. Seamus versus Cesaro in the best of seven with nothing on the line finals. No, there's a championship opportunity on the line, Vinny. Get it straight. Is that like Dario Cueto's unique opportunities? This is a series of matches for a championship opportunity. Why do people watch this show? <laughs> I don't have any idea. It's so bad. It was a good sports entertainment I don't even know what they say for match. Do they say match? Is that allowed? I think it's still allowed. Okay. Sports entertainment spectacle. This was a good sports entertainment match for this championship opportunity in the finals of this. Okay, best you've of got seven to stop it. Series of matches. I get. I get your point. I know you're being sarcastic and making fun of them, but I can't deal with it for three hours and then deal with it with you. Wait till we get to the contusions they suffered at the end. <laughs> I'll bet you anything. I'm going to go to WWE.com right now. I'll bet you anything they're going to talk about the contusions these two men suffered. Why don't you do that? Why don't okay. you do that? So they're hitting each other really hard. No one really cares. So Cesaro does he 619, and the announcers had no choice but to acknowledge it and to credit it to Rey Mysterio. That made me laugh. Started uh, trading big moves. Cesaro made his comeback. And then Cesaro? First... <laughs> They're brawling like on the ropes and on, on the apron, and and uh, Seamus teases white noise on the apron, which, as you know, Brian, is the hardest part of the ring. And I thought, you idiots, please, I should kill you. You idiots, please don't. Yes, I did. I'm a hypocrite. I was begging them not to do this because I thought if you hit this move, Cesaro might die. They didn't do the move, and I thought, oh, good, Cesaro's going to live to see another day. Well, that was not the goal apparently, because Cesaro then did he tope. And I don't know if it was his fault or Seamus's, but I'm pretty sure that the plan was not for this six foot five, two hundred and eighty pound man to fly out of the ring and land upside down on his head. You know what was really weird about it was he went. It's, it's hard for me to even describe this. He started to do a tope, and then in mid move he began to tuck for a flip dive. And then he decided to straighten out to finish with the tope, yes. but landed on his head and neck, scorpioned over. I am glad we had a gymnast here to break down exactly what oh uh, his body mechanics. Oh my god! I thought he was. I, I honest to god thought he was dead. We have said the same thing. I thought he was deceased. I caught your wife looking at me because I, I, you know, when I sit here, for, she, 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 she has seen me watch these shows, and I usually sit there for, through three hours of silence, miserable silence. And at this point, when he landed on his head, I screamed, "Oh my god!" Almost jumped up, and I realized your wife was staring at me, and I realized my eyes were wide open and my hand was over my mouth. But yes, we all thought he died. And then he rolled over, and based on his frantic, bug-eyed, blinking expression, I believe he thought he had died as well. He was looking at the lights of the building in Indianapolis thinking, this is what heaven is like. I have passed on. I have ceased to be. They showed this in super slow-mo, which was sickening. But it did show that at least it was more of a violent impact to the side of the neck and not total spinal compression. Match continued. They began to kick out of finishers after this insanity. Seamus, a 300 plus pound man, jumped off the top rope, landed on the floor to sell an uppercut. Don't do this, guys. You're huge. They go over the barricade. Refs come out to check on them, and the match is thrown out. I suspect this is not the planned finish. And there's set medics out there saying, stop these maniacs. Dude, I think this was the planned finish. Well, that's also possible. Let me read this here. Prepare yourself, Vinny. Okay. These are the results of this match from WWE.com. I did not bring any whiskey to prepare myself, but have at it. For two months now, the WWE universe has been wondering whether Cesaro or Sheamus is the better man. After WWE Clash of Champions... They're still wondering. The grueling best-of-seven series between the Swiss Superman 
and the Celtic Warrior ended in a no contest for match number seven, leaving the superstars visibly frustrated and the WWE Universe buzzing over what comes next, next to say nothing of who will get the promised championship opportunity that had been serving as the winner's purse for the series. They got paid nothing for these seven say they're working for free? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Perhaps it's fair that no clear winner could be decided in the match. The two superstars were neck and neck for the entirety of the contest, which was a testament to Cesaro's resilience following continued punishment to his bad back. Despite the damage to his lumbar, Cesaro continued to dig in for second wind after second wind. Wouldn't that be a third wind? You'd think. Rattling off an uppercut express. If you only knew how many capital letters were here in this, by the way. Tornado DDT and a 619. Yes, that 619, it says. Seamus, for his part, answered with the Irish curse, clover leaf, and a Celtic cross backbreaker combo, all of which have been his bread and butter throughout the series. There's only a little more. Of course, each time the two superstars dug in, it meant they had to resort to increasingly desperate measures, hence a suicide dive from Cesaro that ended with him landing headfirst on the ring floor. He even survived a bro kick moments later. The bout eventually devolved into a slugfest of the most basic, brutal variety, with the two trading hands outside the ring and ultimately spilling out into the WWE Universe in a heap. After WWE doctors tended to a punch-drunk Sheamus and a wounded Cesaro, whose arm seemed to have been compromised, it was determined that the match must be called off on account of their injuries. That was written by Andy Griffith. Fittingly enough, despite the ruling, Cesaro quickly returned to the ring, demanding their showdown be restarted, and the Celtic warrior was hauled away by a team of medical officials as Sheamus tried to fight his way back with every step. Would you really have expected anything less? They're going to be a tag team. Hmm, interesting. I was going the other way and thinking they're going to be in Hell in a Cell. Could do that as well. Yeah. Could do that as well. Could do A, then B. Hmm. Well, they keep saying a championship opportunity. They're so vague about it. It could be the world title. It could be the United States title. It's Cesaro. Bring back... Uh, it's, it's Cesaro and Sheamus. Bring back the European title. It could be. Anyway, can you imagine reading every single one of those results like that? No. Well, I can't imagine caring enough to go to the website and look. And do you know that at the bottom of every one of these reviews, they embed a Facebook feed of comments... Which is invariably complete burials of the product for They're page after so page after dumb. page. It's mind boggling. Uh. Sami Zayn versus Chris Jericho. Very sloppy. A lots of spots where the announcers weren't even sure what happened. It occurred to me that the match was like six or seven minutes old and I've written down almost nothing. By the way, Cesaro's fine. Oh good. That's the early word. He is okay. Sammy tried his through the ropes DDT and went as badly as I have ever seen it. Jericho was in a Boston or had a Boston crab. Sammy hit a blue thunder bomb for a near fall. The crowd inexplicably decided this was awesome, and then Jericho hit a code breaker and won. I thought it was a good match. I thought it was disappointing. It was very sloppy. There was one botched spot after another. Good match though. But it was a good match. <laughs> It was a good match with a lot of botched spots. That's right. possible. Sure, sure. It is possible. It's not like a Braun Strowman match where every move is a botched spot and it sucks. I liked it. Now, why Chris Jericho pinned Sami Zayn clean in the middle? I don't have any goddamn idea. I don't have any idea. <laughs> I'm like mystified i have no suggestions either now, i will say sammy took just about the best bump for a code breaker i ever saw i gotta give the guy credit for that and when he took it i was like god that was awesome and then the ref counted three and i was like what i don't know it's hispanic heritage month so they had a tribute video for roberto clemente a baseball player where the hell is mine who <laughs> to my knowledge never wrestled they mentioned that he was a Puerto Rican, and I w swear, to, I promise you, I thought this was going to turn into a Shining Stars promo, but no, this is a tribute to a baseball player here in his here in Hispanic Heritage Month on WWE. Yeah, not even a wrestler. No. When you think about all of the Hispanic wrestlers who are not 
going to be celebrated in Hispanic Heritage Month. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is September 25th. They've got one show left. <laughs> That's somehow, a good point. Why is it Somehow for? they ran out of wrestlers and are now on baseball players. Have they been doing this during Raw? Yeah. Okay. That's beside the point. Well, I, I, it is. It's still dumb they had to do a baseball player and many wrestlers did not get uh, honored. That is true. Or authors. Or wrestling At journalists. Least I wrote about wrestling. Come on. Where's my video? I could only imagine the video they would have made of me. All the footage out there, the Battle of the Empire, my ice bucket challenge, Nancy Grace. It's could have been amazing. Photos of your trainer being killed by Tajiri on Livewire. True. Or whatever show that was. It's right. Foley and Steph met, met with Kevin Owens backstage. Paper bag bandit. <laughs> you can't tell me they couldn't make a good video. Slow motion footage of paper bag bandit set to tell me a lie. Oh, man. <laughs> you retire immediately. Things would have peaked. So Foley and Steph met with Kevin Owens backstage, and this begins my biggest problem with this show. Every time she's on screen, Vinny, you lose it. It's not even just her. It's the whole thing. The main storyline in WWE these days is who gets to be the man's favorite wrestler. The Universal Championship is a token of appreciation that may or may not go along with that. The important thing is, who do Hunter and Steph like best? This whole show was about the McMahons, and the whole main event was a tribute to Triple H, who wasn't even on the show. You know, Vinny, I get really mad about this sometimes, and I rant and I rave, and then there are other times where I just sit back and go, we just have to accept that this is not our professional wrestling anymore. When Kevin Owens won this title and the fans chanted, you deserve it, you know what that told me? It told me that they are fine with this. That is their wrestling. It is a award that is given to the owner's favorite wrestler, and they accept that. So who the fuck are we to tell them that it sucks? They like it. I'm a critic. Well, it is my job to tell you what I think sucks. I'm not saying that people, you're wrong. People pay me to tell them what I think sucks. That's true. That is my job description. You're right. And I rant about it, too. <laughs> I'm just telling you that we also have to look at it from the perspective of this, this is passed into a... I can't say well, it passes no. by. Okay, I, I see it's your point as well. It's a new business. I see your point as well, yes. And we do have to acknowledge that, that it's a new business. Their job is not to make Vincent very high happy. Their That's job, for fucking sure. <laughs> their job is to present a product that will keep their TV audience around. <laughs> their no, job, they're not doing that either. Their job is to make the remaining fans happy and to piss you off by bringing back the headbangers. <laughs> I hope some way, I hope someday someone working for a company now puts that on a resume. Work achievements. You know, streamlined video streaming service. Organize a massive database. Pissed off Vinny by bringing back the headbangers. That's right. Anyway, Foley and Stefan Owens had a meeting. I didn't care about it. Had a long, long, long video recapping the women's angle. And we had Charlotte versus Sasha versus Bailey in a three-way. Listen, I don't want to be that guy that has to nitpick, but hey, you're paying me. I'm going to tell you what I think sucks. This is a three-way, correct? Yeah. Dana's at ringside, Yeah. correct? Yeah. That means that there's no DQs, correct? Correct. Why the fuck wasn't she just in the ring helping Charlotte for this entire match? They're too stupid to think of that. There was a spot later in the match where she did, in fact, blatantly interfere in front of the referee, and it was not a DQ. And then two minutes later, when Charlotte is locked, she is locked in the bank statement. I thought, well, Dana's clearly going to hit the ring. It's established in this match that there's no DQs. No, she stood outside the ring and she encouraged Charlotte to try to get to the ropes. I was like, this sucks. Yeah. (laughs) Little things like that make you not care about who wins and loses or what's going on in the ring. The action was mostly fun. It was a well-wrestled professional wrestling match bereft of logic the funny thing was it was put together to make you think these women by the end of this these women are not in charlotte's league and do not have business competing with her i saw it a little differently well i didn't see it differently but i know what they were trying to do which is different than what you said what they're trying to say the story they're trying to tell is that sasha and bailey are awesome but they're negating each other and that's how charlotte continues to escape with the belt kind of there were points here where Charlotte was just beating them both up at the same time. 
For well, prolonged periods. She is the champion. Yeah. There was a point where they were trading chops from their knees. Actually, before I get to that, they're brawling on the floor. There's a lot of brawling on the floor on the show. After we had just seen Cesaro nearly die, after we had nearly seen uh, Sheamus break both his legs, Sa- Sasha jumps off the apron and does the diving double knee strike to Bailey, who's you know, are standing and takes a bump for that. So essentially, Sasha jumps off the apron and comes down hard on both knees on the floor. Are we determined to kill someone tonight? You know, it's funny you mention that. I know some people get mad because if a show is good, they just want all positivity. But I'm going to give you some negatives right here. Sasha's going to kill herself. How many times has Sasha been injured since she's been in this company? More than once. Like, I can't even count the number of times. And now she's out here. Okay, she had a legit bad back. She had a legitimate bad back. Right? Yeah. Okay. When I used to teach gymnastics, all the little kids bounced on the trampoline. And they had a move called a doggy drop. Which is where you jump in the air, and you come down on your hands and knees, and then you bounce back to your feet. Mm. And it was hammered into my head as a coach, the children must put their hands down. You cannot have children on the trampoline drop only to their knees and bounce back to their feet. Because you can fuck up your back. Sasha's jumping off the apron and doing a double knee drop to the floor with a bad back. Yeah. And she did not land in doggy drop position with her hands on the ground. Flat on her knees. Yeah. There was a spot where Charlotte kicked her in the back, and she just goes flying ragdoll Enzo Amore style right into the turnbuckle. I thought, she's going to kill herself for no reason. So after she did this double knee uh, knee drop to the floor, there were fans in the crowd who, for reasons I cannot explain, chanted ECW. (laughs) Well, it was pretty hardcore. (laughs) Every time you see anything you enjoy now, is that what you chant? Hey, listen, I'm not going to say anything bad about this crowd. This was a good crowd tonight, until they got tired at the end. Until they got worn out and bored. So, yes, Dana interfered and then stopped interfering random, randomly. And at the end, Charlotte booted both women and pinned Bailey. Yeah. So, do these three women just keep feuding forever? Well, I think what happens... I'll tell you what happens. The next Raw pay-per-view is in, is in Sasha's hometown. Oh, I see. I'm sure Sasha, because she did not get pinned, is going to go for the title. She'll probably win the title. And then they'll do the build towards Sasha and Bailey at Mania. As well as the main event of Charlotte versus Emma. Surely to close the show. Sure. We went to the experts, experts panel. Jerry Lawler said he enjoyed watching Chris Jericho dominate Sami Zayn. Now, I think he was just playing heel announcer, but is that still the message you want to send to people? <laughs> that Sami Zayn is a geek? I guess. Booker said he was the only man in the world who wanted to watch Cesaro and Sheamus wrestle again. Lita enjoyed the women's match. She said the women's match stole the show. Mm-hmm. And they showed Nia Jax beating Alicia Fox in the pregame show. Roman Reigns versus Rusev. Before they started, I do want to mention the pre-match video said that Roman is fighting for the U.S. title and Rusev is fighting for his wife's honor. And he's the heel? (laughs) Now. There's a little bit of weirdness. (laughs) There's a lot of weirdness. These two big, strong men went in there and worked their asses off. These dudes were going the whole way through. They left nothing back. They left all they had out there. And they had a lot. It was back and forth, just a long brawl for 10 minutes or so. Just back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Crowd got a little restless and there was no momentum shift to cheer for this. Chanted for CM Punk. I don't know why. So Rusev uh, finally took the accolade. Roman escaped, hit the spear. Lana pulled the ref out of the ring. The ref ejected her. And she left, screaming she had done nothing wrong. So Roman whipped Rusev's ass at ringside, tried to spear in the ring, but Rusev caught him with a super kick, put him back in the uh, accolade. Roman did the Hulk Hogan spot, powering up to his feet out of the camel clutch. Rusev raked his eyes. He was screaming that Roman couldn't beat him, and then Roman popped out of the corner with a spear to win the match. Now, the first half of this was basically just two guys, as hard as they were working, Nothing meant anything. It was boring, the first three quarters of this match. Maybe maybe two-thirds. 
Final one third was great. One third was outstanding. Very, very good final moments of this match. It was Roman Reigns versus the evil foreign menace for the championship of these United States. And the fans were still booing Roman Reigns and chanting for Rusev. I was greatly entertained. (laughs) The best part was Roman gets the pin. Ref counts three and his music plays and he's lying there for 20 or 30 seconds. And the ref goes and gets the U.S. title. And by the time he gets back in the ring, Roman is now sat up, but he's still exhausted. And then he turns and looks at his new belt, and this huge smile breaks out over his face. <laughs> he was so happy to be the U.S. champion now. Good. That was great. We need more guys happy to win championships. I want to mention, by the way, that on Observer Live today, we were talking about Nia Jax versus Alicia Fox. And I mentioned that Nia Jax was, of course, going to have a new finish because they cannot figure out what they want her to use for a finish, and she's had three already. She had a she had a leg drop. Mm-hmm. Then she had a Samoan drop into a backbreaker, which the moment I saw it, I knew she'd never do it again, and she didn't. And then she had a weird power slam type deal. Well, here we are, her fourth new finish. Now it is just a straight Samoan drop. That's probably the one that she'll keep. She beat Alicia Fox. Mm. You've never even seen Nia Jax, have you, on this main roster? I think the first time. Mm. You've missed nothing. Is she saying the same Nia Jax I saw on NXT? Yeah, she just has a different finish on every show. Yes. So Steph met with, or Steph and Foley met with Seth and sucked up to him just like they had sucked up to Owens earlier. And here is where it really occurred to me. Why should I care about Owens or Rollins or Foley or Steph or Hunter? I have no idea what's going on. I have no idea who is on whose side. I have no idea who is loyal to who or who has betrayed who. I guess Hunter betrayed Seth. That's pretty obvious. But I have no idea what about any of these people is admirable or why I should care in any way. You know, I was texting with a buddy that was there tonight, and he noted that the Kevin Owens-Seth Rollins championship match had the least heat of anything on the entire show. Yeah. And it is exactly... What we've been talking about for weeks now, the half-ass, bullshit Seth Rollins babyface turn. I said it on day one. They've got to go all the way. They cannot fuck this up. And what do they do? Seth is out there. His feelings are hurt. Hunter and Steph chose somebody else. He's mad about it, but he's mad because it's not him. And so he wants to prove them wrong. It's just such bullshit. And he came out here, and he got cheered, but... He got cheered like the guy where the fans don't totally trust the guy yet. And he just didn't feel at all like the top babyface. And right now, he is the top babyface. This Seth Rollins heel turn has been a mess. And this match did not help. I don't know what he's missing. A lot. (laughs) It is a lot. (laughs) He's just a fella out there working in the babyface role. Plus, he's going up against Kevin Owens, who they love. Yeah. The dynamic is just a disaster. It's really, really terrible. And they've done nothing in booking to turn that around. There have been many times where we've been re- reviewing Raw, and you have mentioned that he's supposed to be a babyface, and I've argued with you, because I don't think it's true. It is true. They just are doing it totally wrong. So this match was similar to the uh, Roman-Rusev match, in that the first two-thirds were terribly boring, but then instead of doing a great finish, they did a shit finish. Vinny. Can I explain something to you? I've said this on another show. Maybe it was this one. They don't know. They don't know how to book a top baby face anymore. Well, that's clear. I mean, this guy is supposed to be their top baby face. Look at what they've done with him. Even a guy who comes into the company as a big time beloved baby face, Sami Zayn, they fuck it up. Mm-hmm. They cannot push a top baby face. No. That's amazing. Well, dude, we the whole story... How can you not figure out how to make a guy likable? It's the past two years as the story of this company. They want Roman Reigns to be liked, but they can't figure out how to do it. And Daniel Bryan, they lucked into. They, they've fought actively against. That's right. <laughs> Saying they lucked into is not giving them enough credit. That's right. They fucked up, and he got over, and so finally they went with it, and now they think, oh, well, we got him over. By fucking Yes. Up. So let's do the same goddamn thing with Dolph Ziggler. We'll they, beat they him don't... on every show and yeah. talk about how he's a loser. They're so arrogant. 
they're so obnoxiously arrogant and, 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 and they have such hubris. They think that they got Brian over. Oh, yeah. They don't realize he was so special and unique that he got over in spite of everything they did to him. That is absolutely correct. They think they did it right. Yes. These assholes, <laughs> these arrogant assholes think they're doing it right. So this match was two guys out there doing stuff that no one cared about anything. The pre-match video, I know I've said this like 16 times now, it could not have been made more clear that the affections of the McMahons were more important than any universal and or U.S. title or anything. It's just who gets to be Hunter's lackey is the prize. Yes. The, is the top prize in the Who company. gets to be his boy. Yeah. <laughs> Remember when back in the day that was like the ultimate insult? Yes. This is my boy. He carries my bags. Now it's like, oh, please, Mr. Mister M- Uncle Paul. Mr. Levesque. Can I fucking carry your Halliburton, please? Owens did a cactus elbow, which is a blatant way to suck up to the GM. Nobody cared. Rollins made a comeback, I guess, is what I wrote. Can I mention something about that flying elbow? Mick Foley himself has talked about how stupid it was yes. for him to do that goddamn flying elbow. And everyone keeps doing it. Mark Briscoe does it. Yeah. He's got a business and a family and like 15 children. Like, why the fuck are you doing this? <laughs> That's quite true. And Seth Rollins is out there. Like, uh, Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens, when he came to WWE, he had a really bad back. Uh-huh. And I guess it's better now. But let me tell you something. Doing fucking flying elbows off the apron of the cement in that with that weight? This yeah. is a bad idea, dude. Yes. So... This match went on and on. It was very, very boring. And I was surfing Twitter and up spoke one Jim Ross, who has seen a wrestling show or two in his time. He declared, quote, the perceived overuse of kicking out of others finishers early in the night does the main event no favors. (laughs) Indeed. This guy's seen a match or two is right. Indeed. So... They're brawling on the floor, and Owens lays Seth out on a table and goes to climb the other table, and the ref's saying, no, don't do it. And Owens tells the ref to suck it, and he tells Rollins to suck it for the biggest reaction of the entire match. Because, you see, Hunter used to tell people to suck it, and Hunter is cool. That's what the people think. And he's supposed to be the heel. Yes. <laughs> so fucked up. Owens puts himself through a table with the scent on. They keep on wrestling. Jericho runs out. There's a million bullshit things going on. Ref gets bumped. Rollins throws Owens into Jericho. He does the crotch chop and the pedigree. An unstoppable combo. Because Hunter did those things. There is no ref. Rollins works over Jericho for a while. Hits dives on Owens and Jericho. Steph sends another ref running out, and as soon as he hits the ring, Owens immediately hits a pop-up powerbomb for the win. Now, you will recall my favorite moment of that Roman reigns Rusev match was afterwards when we got Roman's reaction to winning the belt. Owens hits his move, the ref counts three, and as soon as the Universal Championship match ends, we must cut back to the stage to catch the reaction of Stephanie McMahon. Yeah. Which was ambiguous, by the way. (laughs) Yeah. By design, but God. So, yes, as my notes here read, I thought this was a boring match with a shit ending. Wow. I thought it was a pretty decent match. It was a decent match. It was not as blow away as I expected it to be. It is funny when you think about Hunter and Steph. I've said this before as well. If I ran a wrestling company and the whole company was designed to tell the world how awesome I was, I'd just be a good guy. So every time I came out, I would be beloved and people would cheer me. (laughs) And when I made a ruling, they'd be happy. Yeah. I wouldn't be a bad guy. I don't even get it. Why do you want to be a bad character, but the whole show was designed to tell everybody that you're awesome? Remember when Tim would do those shows and you'd be the top baby face and the top heel? <laughs> That's what this is. You come out there and run down the all everyone else and then like do birthday announcements. <laughs> Man, it's just such a weird company. Have we ever mentioned that before? This company is weird. In many ways. I don't understand what they're doing, really. <laughs> no. I try with all my might. That is the Clash of the Champions, everybody. Hey, if you're a fan of professional wrestling and you don't give a shit about finishes, this is a fun show. Sure. A real fun show to watch. I do think that this is all leading to 
This is what I figured out here. They have a pay-per-view coming up in a month, so I'm not sure if they can, like, stretch it out this long. But it is Hell in a Cell. They are cage matches. So you could do Cesaro Sheamus in their final match there, even though I have a feeling they're going to do their final match on Raw tomorrow. I figure it's going to be Rollins and Zayn versus Jericho and Owens on Raw tomorrow. And then you could do Seth versus... You could either do Seth versus Jericho at the pay-per-view, which I guess is why Jericho pinned Zayn, or you do Seth versus Owens, Hell in a Cell, and Jericho versus Roman for the U.S. title. Because Jericho has to be having a big match. Otherwise, why did he beat Sami Zayn? I don't know. Doesn't why did he beat sense. AJ Styles at WrestleMania? Well, because their idea was he was losing the next night in the match that nobody remembers, and that was enough. When in reality, that's not enough. All people remember is WrestleMania. We'll see. We'll see what they do tomorrow. Anyway, everybody, that's it from here.